Hey and welcome back to the best thing you watched this week. Hopefully this is part of the best thing you watched this week, but that's what we talk about here is what good content on media came this week. Basic formula is we talk about who won the video quiz. So it's not a video quiz. What is it? Chris? Movie quote quiz. Yeah, thank you. I'll <laughs> learn to speak one day, like just before I die on my deathbed. I've, I've finally learned to speak. Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so the movie quote quiz that Chris gave us last week, we will let you know who won, or if anybody won, then I ask a stupid question, and people debate whether Ruben needs to be fired from asking a stupid question, and then we talk about the best things we watched this week. And in our audio-exclusive bit, wherever you listen to podcasts, we talk about a movie that we haven't seen for a long time or have never seen. We also talk about the worst thing that watched we've watched this week or didn't quite make the list. And then we talk about internet internet news entertainment <laughs> news internet news well today on the internet sounds boring boring <laughs> entertainment news and what we are looking forward to and on patreon this week everything that you can get for just a pound has increased by another video because a patreon member has asked us to talk about our top five guilty pleasure tv series which we had to rank and it was it was an entertaining one. I'm looking yeah. forward to what everybody thought about this. Fro suggested that we did this one, uh, who is one of our great patrons. So thank you for so supporting us there. If you want to watch that video, you can watch it in all its glory at the same time that this is released. So it should be on there now if you're listening to it. <sighs> did I miss anything? Uh, like, share, subscribe. You know, the whole YouTube thing, whatever you're doing there. Yeah. If you're listening on podcast, if you could rate and review us there, that would be outstanding also. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Other than that, I think that's that's enough. Uh, all the housekeeping that we have, right? Yeah. 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 Cool. Cool. Let's let's. I guess it's time to get into. Did you hear about the red and blue ships that collided, Chris? No. All the sailors were marooned. <laughs> What a maroon. Oh, God. Uh, okay. Well, I, I think that is that is a snigger, so I'll take a swig. Oh, Lord. <sighs> Ruben apparently is doing a drinking game. Uh, I was <laughs> not aware of that. This is going to be fun, and I have to figure out what the rules are so that I can make him drink more. Um, <laughs> no, this could be fatal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Should we dive into the movie quote quiz? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, well, I didn't get fired this week, and actually, I was surprised. Like, a lot of people got it. I thought it was going to be very, very difficult. Uh, Red Comet, Tara Briscoe, and Nostromo all got all three answers. Uh, the Bunny Dojo, which is still one of my favorite um, <clears throat> YouTube uh, channel names, uh, got two out of the three. So congratulations to you all. The answers were The Last Starfighter, Starman, mm. and Flight of the mm -hmm. Navigator. So, mm. <clears throat> yeah, you know, 80s sci-fi there. Um, I think they all nice. came out with like in within two years of each other, something like that. So, yeah. anyway. There's a terribly depressing documentary about Flight of the Navigator really? on Prime um, about the star and what happened to him since. It's very entertaining, but it's also just like, oh, my gosh. Oh. No. Oh, yeah. So, okay. if, you, if you want your childhood ruined, go watch that. Oh, yeah. nice. Okay, I'm going to avoid yeah. that then. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready for uh, for this week's? Yeah. Okay, it's a theme also. I'm not going to tell you what the theme is. Nice. Number one, my name is Zarnoff. This is Zabu, Zelnor, Zelbor, Zelmina, and uh, Jeff. Mm. Number two, all I need are some tasty waves, a cool buzz, and I'm fine. Mm. I uh, know that one. Number three. You know, uh, I never thought I'd say this to anybody, but you two smoke entirely too much reefer. <laughs> okay. I think I know what the theme is. Cool. Cool. All right. Let us know. Uh, we will, you can, you can comment the answers on my channel or on Ruben's channel. We look at both of them to gain the answers mm -hmm. or not to gain the answers. Cause I know the answers, but to, <laughs> to, to glean the winner's information. So, uh, wherever you want to comment that, let us know. Uh, we'll give you the shout out next week. And now Ruben, do you have a ridiculous question or just a question? It doesn't have to be ridiculous. I actually have two this week. Uh -oh. One is continuing the, th the thread. Like last week oh. we had no seatbelts on. Yes. 
on spaceships yes. in Star Trek, uh, which people did comment on. And thank you. Uh, they remind me that Jeffron Cock- Cockrum, that's a, in Star Trek First Contact, had the seatbelts there, but they have inertial dampeners, which means that they don't need seatbelts yet they still bash each other around and fall over the place i i I still say (laughs) we need seatbelts for these guys we need to protect our crew man the card is getting on right so let's protect him (laughs) Uh, just give him a red shirt and we'll be fine (laughs) oh my gosh no (laughs) anyway on that literally yesterday i watched this in a film and it, it now irks me because i've seen it written into so many movies and tv series in South Africa, maybe this is an African thing. So in mm. South Africa, uh, wait, 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 I'll swap my battery because apparently it's just gone from half full to dead. <laughs> okay. <sighs> in South Africa, I-, I was born and raised in South Africa, 16 years of my life there, been back and forth on holidays. We have cars that, <laughs> in my family, we haven't had expensive cars. We've had old cars. And uh, sometimes when you're, wherever you're going on holiday, there are long trips and uh, you can have a flat tire and you can even have a flat tire uh, with your spare. But it could be like flipping 100 kilometers to you seeing another person. If you're going on a holiday, that's like in the middle of nowhere. So you've got to drive on the flat to get to a place where it's there. And I've seen and, and we've done this a number of times, driven on the flat and the car was fine. You know, we, we fixed the, you know, mm-hmm. Probably the suspension wasn't quite right anymore, but sure. it, it worked. Oh, oh my gosh, that is the second battery. What is happening? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulties. Okay, so um, driving a car with flats is basically. And yesterday I was watching a film where a family needed to get away from a bunch of bad guys and they got to their car and they'd slashed, I think, one tire or maybe even two, but they leave their car and they run away. And they're like, you get caught and stuff happens. And you're like, I've seen this done so many times where they look at a flat tire. It's like our car is now undrivable. But anybody that's ever had any experience with, with cars, you can still drive fairly well on flat tires and get to a different location from people that are on feet. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like you might not have as much control and might damage your car. But if it comes down to your life or your family's life, you're going to drive the car in flat. <laughs> It, has, has that ever irked you? Have you ever thought about going, you can totally get away with that? I, I don't know if I've actually like thought about it consciously, but that makes complete sense. Yeah, absolutely. If I'm being chased, if there's something, you know, threatening me or my family, a small, you know, a flat tire is not going to be the thing that stops me. It's going to, you know, that's that's protection there. And if nothing else by me weaving around and everything, I'm going to run that person over or the thing over, whatever it is, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's it's more like a funny thing. It's like d- d- you can drive a car with flat flat yeah. tires or can you? Let us know if you've ever had to do that in the comments below or you've looked at a TV series or movies. Like, Just drive the damn car. It's a flat tire. Get over it. <laughs> uh, that's that's where I'm at now with that. When I see a flat tire, I say, come on. Just drive. <laughs> yeah. You obviously have drivers that drive for you. That's cause <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had to change a tire? Can you still change a tire? Yes, oh. I can. I have. I can. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's not fun on, on a highway, but. No. Uh, yeah. No. All right. So the second question I have, and this is a, it's a bigger, wider question, but it's very topical. We could have talked about it in the news, but I wanted to bring it in the forefront here. So we've had the strikes. Yes. Uh, with our writers, which is ongoing. Mm-hmm. And we recently had uh, a news article by a number, number of big outlets, Deadline, Variety, uh, talking about how the big the big wigs so we're talking uh who was it It was disney oh yeah it was netflix it was amazon and it was it was someone Uh, else as well warners Warners, yeah Yeah. they're gonna wait out the writers so that they start losing their homes their cars and so that they don't have to to pay them so in one hand that's that is awful but not shocking i mean it's a tactic that works fair enough and then we've also had just this week's where the actors are mm-hmm. going on strike. Um, so a lot of series that have just started or movies that have just started in production uh, are now having to stop. Deadpool 3 has just stopped mm-hmm. uh, and it's just started. So 
all the stuff that you're getting used to or getting ready to watch is, you know, all those dates that have been pushed back already are going to be pushed back again. Mm-hmm. Uh, is you like, Ruben, what the hell is the question? The question is, do we need Hollywood production companies anymore? Because I, I heard someone say, why don't the people that are in the WGA, or what's it called? Yeah, WGA you have and, yeah. and the WGA, mm-hmm. if they joined together with the amount of money that a lot of those big AAA actors have uh, and the writers, if they performed, if they brought, created their own production company, they could write and produce under their own new banner in the protection hub and create new uh, for films and TV series, basically jobs without having to go towards them. I know there's been some smaller versions of where actors have done that and, and funded it themselves. Mm-hmm. So my wife mentioned to me, she said, is having the strikes, I mean, people need to be paid for what they work for is great, but is having the strikes a bad thing? Because there's so many writers and actors everybody in in the film industry that never get the time of day that are as good as our triple a a listers there's so many good actors that we should never see the same face in a movie again it's sh- we shouldn't have stars like that isn't there are so mm. many actors that are as good that people never get a chance True. if we made it fresh like let's change out the writers let's give all the new writers a chance that never had chances the ones that have been working for 30 years that maybe have done a tv episode here and there but are actually very good at what they do there's so much talent out there worldwide that we that hasn't gotten a chance because hollywood is a bubble <laughs> that it's like who you know is who you know mm-hmm. and what you do to get on their good side or you know that kind of thing but if we just changed it out or made our own production company, would that change the face of the rules or the regulations? It's a very big kind of question. Recently, Tom Holland even said, and he does these podcasts very, very few times, is that he loves what he does, but he hates being in what he does. Is He hates the world of Hollywood. He said everything for him everything there is toxic it's horrible the, the how they have to address themselves the the, the, the popularity what goes hand in hand and what goes mm-hmm. on behind closed doors like he didn't go into details but he said if he could he would never go to another premiere the only premiere he would ever go to is his own if he had to he hates doing all of that and puts himself away from it. he tries to distance himself from all of that to keep himself being as human as possible sure. uh so my question is do we need hollywood anymore or or do we need to make like a a clean slate sort of thing Hmm. that's interesting i mean i think we're gonna get we're gonna see a massive shake up here um you know this is this is gonna have monster size uh ramifications and we'll we'll dive into it more i think in the news time Mm -hmm. um on the podcast audio but I kind of like the idea of, you know what, everybody just pull together and make just the WGA SAG-AFTRA, you know, studio. And, you know, you you produce them, they have, you know, okay, so you'll probably have people that come from studios then that would join you that could help with some of the distribution aspects. But you got to know that all these people, they, they have multiple, they wear multiple hats, right? Yeah. So that they're, you know what? That's mm. it's um hmm. it certainly is a a big it's a big time that we live in right now. Like it's yeah. Not only is the earth experiencing some interesting moments, but yeah. in entertainment things are changing and people are not just letting things go anymore. And the people that sit at the top are trying to get away with the things that have been allowed to do for so long. But I think with all the voices now having a voice. Mm-hmm. This is the first time in history we everybody's had a voice when you take the collective voice of people going this is not okay anymore We're, well and i think too that it's going to have a larger ramification you know outside of the entertainment industry because mm. this is this is the power of the people right yeah you know and and if you mistreat your your workers or whatever then it it i mean it, and they they realize that they are greater in number and power than the ones mm. wielding the power over them. Once that realization happens and they become mobilized and unified, yeah, it's it's unstoppable. Because I think the writer strike was like 
they could hold off but with the actors that in conjunction is oh. massive oh yeah. like oh we can't do anything i mean they try to even even recently netflix's one episode of black um, black mirror what was it black mirror apparently was ai generated and that caused a whole con you know people talking about that whether that should be a thing interesting um and i saw an article where they said that some actors had been approached to have a day rate of their likeness digitized and they get paid for that day rate and then they're able to use their likeness forever in anything that they want to create well there were there are some series already that the characters were scanned for the, then that when they asked why they were told it was for um like merchandising and so they didn't give consent to use it as their likeness to recreate them on screen in other scenes mm. and so now yeah. they're like i didn't give my consent for that and yet they have it you know they have all yep. the facial expressions they have my full body yep. they have my voice exactly what that episode in uh, netflix yeah in black mirror joan is awful yeah yeah, Oof. yeah. Mm. all right so that's a massive topic let us know what you think about this whole thing i just thought it would be interesting to bring it up there as part yeah. of the questions because that's what's happening now in yeah. entertainment media and it's definitely going to change the face of entertainment for totally. sure totally yeah yeah uh but let's get into the best thing we watched this week yes chris um was your week as poo as mine yes yes oh, cool. yes it's cool, been cool, very cool. disappointing um mm. it was actually tough to to <laughs> have some things to talk about that that I haven't <laughs> talked about before because um this week on Sunday and then on t Wednesday I me and my family went we fir first saw Mission Impossible uh mm. Dead Reckoning loved it again absolutely can't wait yeah. to see it again um then nice. we watched Joyride absolutely loved that um my kids uh, um, were sitting behind us and some of their laughter was like the loudest in the theater, which was really funny. And so it was great, but <laughs> I've already talked about those, those movies a lot. Yes. So yes. a new series came out, um, on Saturday, July 15th. So the day after your, it, this is Watching published, this. Yeah. um, it's called Cora and mm -hmm. it is a Punjab. Did you get screeners for this then? I did get screeners for it. Yeah. Dude. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's a Punjab series. Uh, or it's Punjabi, but it takes place in Punjab. And it is a right. noir-ish murder mystery. Mm. Now, for me, it's complex because you have the murder mystery and you have this parallel, like, love family relationship story going on with it. Um, mm. Then there's a lot of offshoots. Now, it is... For me, the most noir thing was the slowness, the pacing of it, the just following the cops on their investigation as they go from suspect to suspect to, you know, just checking off all of these boxes as they work through their investigation. So mm. I know that that some people are going to be like, oh, this is slow. It's it's kind of boring. Or why did you go off on this tangent? For me, I was hooked. Um, I I was like in all of these tangents because it made me a part of the investigation. So I would go, you know, and then it made me part of the characters' lives because I got to see their home life. I got to see when they're doing something fun or struggling or when they have to make a decision and how that mm. affects just their attitude through the series. You know, it's uh, six, six episodes, I think. Um, they're all fairly short. They're not... Am I remembering correctly? Yeah, it's a, it's not a long series by any means, but it's um, it feels longer than it is, and I know that that right. can be a turnoff uh, for some. And and th fair enough, totally totally respect that and understand that. Um, the grittiness was not what I was expecting. Um, I didn't. I mean, you, you know, crime crime noir. You think okay, it's going to be a little a little dark, but it it actually went fairly dark. Um, so I was loving it, loving it, loving it. I'm not over the moon on the ending. The resolution okay. felt a little anticlimactic for all of the build up to it. Um, one season then? <clears throat> it's one season. I don't, it, it's, I mean, it's wrapped up. So hmm. I don't know if it's like a limited series or if they're going to continue on with the season two and just do a new case. Because if they do a new case, but we follow the same police officers, 
and they're they're in are you throwing things <laughs> the wind is oh, that's wow. the storm <laughs> oh my gosh um yeah. it you know if they do that if they continue on with the characters and their stories and then take on a new case i'm down for that i will totally mm. go for that because that you know that that's part of the reason i was invested in the show but otherwise um it i can't see it continuing because the we get a solid firm resolution right yeah okay interesting uh what has a spine but no bones i don't know a book <laughs> come on God damn it. <laughs> oh i know the rules now Ruben's getting drunk. I need three more jokes, please. <laughs> Give me a couple more jokes. <laughs> what do you call a wizard who's good with ceramics? Oh, it's got to be something with Harry Potter. I don't know. Literally is Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, no. Harry Pottery. <laughs> God damn it. That's that even that better. Funny. That's even better. <laughs> it's terrible. That's so bad. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll give you a reprieve. What's what's first on your list? <laughs> yeah. First on my list, uh, by far, is the best thing I watched. And is I, I, I'm trying to remember if you've seen this. Uh, it came out in 2022, but I think it's just come out to digital release now. Um, hour and 46 minutes. In the not too distant future, the last two men on Earth must adapt and evolve to save humanity. It's called Biosphere. It stars uh, Sterling K. Brown and Mark Duplass. Have you seen this, Chris? Uh, I can't hear you, Chris. Uh, speak? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you now. Yeah, that was weird. That, uh, so have you seen totally... this, Chris? I, I have not seen it. Um I've I've seen it about and I've seen it pop up on like some streaming stuff and mm. it intrigued me because I like Mark Duplass and I think Sterling mm. K. Brown is great too. So I when wife and I were it. talking about this last night, we was like, how how on earth do I talk about this movie the way I want to without doing spoilers? Mm. This is very tricky. It's thought provoking, like it will stay with you uh after you've watched it it's it's all set in one location could easily be turned into a like theater production because okay. uh, they're in a biosphere um something has happened uh you could guess them being in space underwater uh on another planet you don't know um it's all black outside um i would say try not to read the synopsis if you if you can uh try okay. not to watch a trailer just go into this with what i say from this film if you're intrigued the two actors are phenomenal we have two guys that have known each other for a very long time and with whatever has happened they have to now spend the rest of their life in this biosphere and so you see them training and running it's it's harks to similar biosphere movies that we've had or the Martian, you know, you take little aspects of that where they, they have to live inside this. So they have like a little greenery, uh, small, small place. They got like a tomato tree. They mm. have um, fish in a bath that they're breeding and the fish stuff that like it, it, everything is used. To, like their compost is like from their poop, you know, that's it's all. Yeah all created that they can keep living they have a double layer in their sphere and if one breaks they have to patch it up because whatever is outside is bad for you um and this is that's kind of the the sci-fi story of it but then it's the relationship of these two friends and what they go through living in each other's space day in and day out and then it is the message and there's many themes that it it, it talks about like what 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 we going through in earth and relationships identity uh, sexuality all of that it just kind of it talks in but it's never preachy it's just you on the story with these two guys exploring who mm. they are as people and trying to live in with some you know imagine me and you like we know each other quite well yeah but if you're forced to be with someone that even if you've known for years your best friend day in and day out and you have no there's no escape 
So any sort of argument you have, you then have to. They hear like one says you'll put up a curtain um, <laughs> and just hide behind and be quiet and read a book because there's there's no escaping. You have to kind of figure out or, or, what issues you have. If you have some fundamental beliefs and that other person doesn't and you didn't know that about them it all it brings up so much it's so thought provoking and i think this would have only worked if and the, and the way it does if your two actors are very riveting on screen you know mm. like tom hanks and castaway you need actors that can hold that that you forget that you're watching actors you just think you're watching characters go through this this time um it does end somewhat ambiguously but i think mm. it works to its benefit i think it when it ends i i was like yeah because that that makes me think what happens now what if some people will have issue with this but i like the whole idea of what they're talking about uh there's a big theme of evolution there's a line from jurassic park life finds a way that kind of stuff is all mm -hmm. in part of the storyline it's just mesmerizing and I, I i was trying to figure out why it's mesmerizing because there's two guys talking a lot in a pod it shouldn't be that exciting sure but some movies just have it, it it's what they're going through what they're experiencing and you end up rooting for them but you're also worried for them because there's this ethereal impending doom but you don't know what it is like it's it's outside are, the, are they going to yeah. survive this are they going to live the the small stuff that they have inside that's what you got to live with that's that's it and you're like oh that's so little you know they have a few records they have a tomato tree some fish and their poop and that's what they have to you know survive with <laughs> you're like oh my gosh okay is is that really the life you want to experience is that even worth living so they talk about life you know all those mm -hmm. kind of themes that are bound to come up that's what comes up in here i was riveted from beginning to end i put it on after we had just watched a movie and kirsten goes oh, i need to go to bed and <laughs> like 10 minutes in she's like we're we're like just we finished watching it's like yeah. damn it now now i'm really tired <laughs> <laughs> well that's good to hear i'm gonna have to um rent that because it yeah it, i love I love um, like contained stories or where mm. where our characters, it, it's forced to be, we focus on them because there's nothing else there. There's nothing else, yeah. You know, and it so really, really get then, to see what the actors can do as well. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, I mean, think back to a couple of years ago, Mass. You oh know, my it's, gosh, what an incredible it, film. It's characters yeah. just talking in a room. Yeah. This this movie made me think of a movie from um, 20, <laughs> 20, 2003, and it was called Nothing. And it was mm. an indie film where these friends, um, it's two people, they're living in a house. One day they discover that they can make things disappear um, <laughs> by saying it. Oh, wow. And so okay. it's... Um, Dude, what if you so say you something get, by mistake? Well, see, that's the thing, because now you watch these two people like that, you know what I mean? You're you're in a confined space, right? Mm. You. you so you're going to argue, you're going to get on each other's nerves. There's going to be things. And when that escalates, I mean, like in biosphere, you can either walk out mm. and die or you can deal with it or just sit there in silence in, in nothing. They, <laughs> sometimes they do that, but other times it, it starts to ramp up and it gets very dark, yeah. you know, and it's just, it's so I am, I'm glad this was good because I, it looked yeah, great. It was, it was very good. It was very, a surprise. Uh, which nice. is why I jumped to like the top of my, the best thing I'd watched this week. Also, where do uh, surfers learn to surf, Chris? I don't know. At boarding school. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> All right. Um. The next on my list is the second season uh, of a show. I just binged the first season because I had never seen it um, in preparation for seeing the second season. And it's Apple's The After Party. Mm. Now, I got to tell you. So I binged the whole season of season two. Yeah. <laughs> I get to the last episode and it ends. And I'm like, wait a minute. What's going on here? We didn't get the reveal. What? 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 Apple did not give the final 
episode no that is so frustrating <laughs> oh my so, I so was now like, you <gasps> have to wait weeks maybe i don't know i don't know when Dude. it's going to be available but it's um so it follows the same premise uh as the first one you know there's a murder that happens and we get then the all of the recounting from everybody's perspectives and then it takes on a different film genre mm. uh tiffany haddish Sam Richardson, Zoe Shout, they return. And then we have new characters like yeah. um, Jack Whitehall, Ken yeah. Jong, um, Elizabeth Loving the new Perkins. characters that have been added. Yeah, no, they're they're great. The I like I like the differing uh genres also that we tackle. Mm. Uh, because they just I mean, some of them in the stills, like you can see there's one that's a um like like kind of Bridgerton ish. Mm. You know that what eighteenth century, nineteenth century? I don't know whatever it is. Um, eighteen doesn't matter. Um, you know all the proper, just the tons of clothing, um, and so it's a lot of fun to watch that. I don't think it's as funny as the first season. I was going to uh, ask. Yeah, yeah. The mystery is still really good, and mm. I, the reason I'm upset is because I still can't figure it out. <laughs> who it is so wow. so nine I, episodes in and you still don't know yeah so that wow. was i i have really appreciate that that it has this this aspect to it that they obscure the answers enough and create enough doubt and possibilities for a bunch of different characters that i'm like mm, i don't know um one of the standouts is paul walter hauser in this because he's just he's <laughs> <laughs> because and he's he gets, Paul Walter Hauser. <laughs> exactly. Yes. He's um he he's taking I mean it's it's more towards his other characters than le and much less of uh Blackbird. Right. Blackbird he was terrifying. This yeah. he's um he's a little goofy, but he's mm. also serious and he believes himself. So right. it makes it a, a fun character to watch. Mm. Uh Sam Richardson Richardson, excuse me, is still just brilliant the stammering the uh the the disbelief at some of the things that are happening around there you know the <laughs> where he's like are we all seeing this too you know and uh now there's a there's a new dimension to it because as it starts out him and zoe Shaw are in a relationship ah. and so so there's a new dynamic there i mean in the first season he was he was pining after her Mm. And, you know, now and because it's a wedding, you have family. And so it's familial aspects family. within this. Yeah. yeah. For family. Yeah. It's all about family. family. And so uh, it, you know, it's fun. The episodes are varied. Some are uh, longer. Mm. Some, most are shorter. I think probably 35, 40 minutes. I think one or two of them is like 40 something minutes. Okay. Um, you know, so it, it's quick. It is. I think watching it week to week is still going to be fun because it's each you know, it's each a different perspective. I I really do enjoy the big binge of it, though, because I can go from character to character and not have to remember yeah. all of the pieces within the mystery. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're watching week to week, you're still going to have a lot of fun. And it's just, a, you know, especially with the different genres that it always feels fresh and new each mm -hmm. episode. OK, yeah. nice. That uh, sounds like it's worth kind of getting into. Although, yeah, I, I might watch to wait until all the episodes are out <laughs> yeah yeah i can i can see that i'm um i'm really hoping that for my own sake that the finale comes soon because <laughs> dang it <laughs> yeah um a, a duck walks into a bar and buys a round for everybody and he tells the bartender put it on my bill <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so i've been looking for a good shark movie to watch because i like shark movies most of the time they're stupid but you know oh. some of these shark movies are good uh i've seen all of the shark native movies and shark puss versus blah 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 and you oh, know, that was terrible yeah it wasn't good uh someone suggested to me go watch bait and i oh. I watched 2015 bait and uh, I watched at the beginning, almost switched it off. I uh, saw some of the actors and I thought, you know what? I'm going to give it a bit of a chance. Watched till halfway through 
and went, no, screw this, and switched that off. So then I went to some of my other recommendations. And just this week, um, I believe it's come to digital. There is a new shark movie called The Black Demon. Um, Stranded on a crumbling rig in Baja, a family faces off against a vengeful megalodon shark. Um, Interesting that it comes up with a based on a true fable. um, And we've got Omar Shapiro. Um, we've got a young actor, Carlos Solorenzo, Josh Lucas, who's the, the dad, Fernanda Ojojolo, uh, Orella Jalo. I'm decimating her name, but she was great <laughs> in this. Um, basically, you know, they're in this town that they've been to before as young lovers. They've come back to reminisce. Josh Lucas's character is an oil dude that comes to either decommission or safety check these oil rigs that, you know, they're drilling for oil out in the ocean. There is some sort of law of a curse around uh, a god. If we mess with Earth too much, there's some repercussions of that. And so this curse goes hand in hand with this shark. And for some reason, the whole family end up on the rig. I I won't spoil any reason why, Um, but it is believable in in what happens. So that's fine. Uh, You don't see too much of the sharks, so they manage to keep less is more like an alien sort of movie, you know, Mm. but when you do see it, it's it's it is scary and it's creepy, but it's them trying to survive on this rig with the characters that they meet that are left on the rig. Um, I think it's a one time watch. It's it's good. It's fun. Uh, it's definitely like part and parcel way better than uh, other shark movies that take themselves too seriously. I think Josh Lucas is is a great actor and I liked the supporting actors. I think because it has that lore, that kind of mm-hmm. fable aspect to it, it really adds to a different. A- I've certainly never seen it like a shark movie portrayed that way mm-hmm. um, as part of the, the culture, which I really liked. It added a, a dimension to the shark movie that was i would say it's probably a it doesn't nearly have a uh uh as big a budget as the meg um mm, sure or a you know, production value even but it's probably a better story if that makes sense um as to yeah so i thought it was really interesting i love the whole idea with the, the the reason why it's called the black demon having this family then want to survive there's even a little dog called toro he's like a little chihuahua mm-hmm. don't look him in the eyes he's badass and you look him in the eyes, he's he's going to rip your face off. Uh, so you're on their side. Like, there are the underdogs. They can't get off the rig. This thing is like has a supernatural ability to know when you want to leave the rig or, or oh, wow. stuff like that. And it's 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 massive. Any boat that comes there gets destroyed, that kind of thing. The the There's no kind of... They can't call out. Like, everything's destroyed. So they got to kind of MacGyver their way into surviving. Uh, there's a redemption arc. There's all of that kind of classical stuff, as well as seeing the big shark munch on people. So, I thought this was different. It was nice. That that's cool that it pulls on lore. Mm. You know, it makes it plausible. Maybe yeah. at least from my perspective. You know what I mean? Because now yeah. it's it's not just you know shark to puss or whatever. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. no, exactly. Maybe. And there's also megalodon is a thing that we know. It, could have existed in the prehistoric age yeah uh, and you know in the, in the mariana trench who knows what escapes out of there but yeah it, yeah it was fun yeah well i um as i was looking through the cast there's somebody in here that uh made me instantly want to watch this movie and it's hector jimenez okay who he's in nacho libre but for me <laughs> he's in gentleman broncos right uh your favorite <laughs> Yeah. Film. So yeah. outstanding. Well, this this is good. Um, yeah, it's it's available to rent um, on a lot of uh, uh, platforms here in the U.S. So fun. Okay. Nice. Um. <clears throat> well, I told you I had a week of poo, right? Yes. Yeah, I don't have anything else on my list. I don't oh have my, anything oh, else worth talking about. Oh was, my gosh, dude! It, it was I honestly want- it was a tough it was a tough tough week. It, However, it was a, yeah. What we didn't discuss at the beginning, maybe you can just put this back. We do have a new segment for our show. We do. Yeah. We do. Why don't you talk about it? All right. So from now on, every week, we're going to be doing an anime segment called Over 9000. 
It's over 9,000! And uh, anime <laughs> lovers will, will understand that. And basically, it's the place to talk about all anime news, episodes, movies, anything that's to do with the world of anime, because it's just growing and growing. We thought it'd be a really good place to have a little segment in. Let us know in the comments what you want us to talk about in the anime segment. If there's something that has come up that you've gone, man, you guys need to check this out. And talking about that, there, one of our um, subscribers, Paul Nolan, who often you know, will tweet something or mention something that we need to watch. Mm -hmm. He told me about an anime site that isn't Crunchyroll. It's called High Dive. And there's a lot of anime on there that I haven't seen that they've managed to get uh, licenses for. Ooh. And one of the series that he suggested that I watch is called uh, Spy... Let me get this right. Spy Kurushutsu, which is Spy Classroom or Spy Room. Which is basically a decade ago, mankind witnessed the deadly potential of weapons caused by the, the Great War. To avoid another catastrophe, governments worldwide has resorted to espionage to fulfill their agendas. So, like, if you think about that in, in that world, we now have schools from all governments around the world that are training their young ones to be spies. And uh, this series takes the rejects of certain schools that just kind of scrape the barrel that nobody really wants and the world's best spy he didn't label himself this but there's like a master class or that's the top tier and they all rank this dude as the world's best spy he grabs all the rejects seven young ladies and he's going to teach them he's got one month to make them into spies that can take on what they call uh the an unattainable mission is basically meaning like you know mission impossible sort mm -hmm. of thing yeah um i've seen the first two episodes and entirely really fun well animated um because it's all young ladies there's a few scenes that you don't see anything but that like they're in the bath and stuff and i'm like mm, i'm a grown man i don't need this but it, it's anime so that you know you, you <laughs> It, it happens it's part of the culture but the spy craft stuff is really entertaining the main character is so like caricature of he doesn't know how to teach girls really but he's going to learn um he, he says to to <laughs> to train them to how to pick a lock in one of the toughest locks he's got like seven because he wants them he gives them all this lock and they all try and they fail and so he goes and he just throws it up in the air and all the locks are picked and they're like, how do you, how, how do you do that? How did you do that? Are you going to teach us? And he says, yes, just do it. <laughs> that's, that's his, that's his, awesome. like, and they're like, oh, great. Not only are we rejects, but we have like a reject teacher. He might be a masterclass in, in, in spy, but he kind of doesn't know how to teach. <laughs> so th that is, they all have their special eccentricities. They're all, gr the seven are all good specialize in something and so they're mm -hmm. going to use their teamwork to go in on this mission so immediately we have a, a time scale we have a month where they're going to go on this mission that is also again that's an impending doom because they have to be the best not even like s rank tiered spies are would take this on but because he's the world's best and so i've only watched two but it was thoroughly entertaining um high dive is is fairly i think it's cheaper actually like monthly mm. uh, than crunchy roll so oh, okay that was another good one nice well did you um did you is it dub sub both oh so i'm watching that in uh it's original so i was watching original language and reading okay. subtitles yeah nice uh netflix netflix actually released a new batch of anime episodes for record of ragnarok which is a fighting mm -hmm. anime uh, i've spoken about it before and i've been championing championing this anime for a while but I, I can't in good conscience continue to say this is great it's oh now draining really? my spirit i don't know mm. why they've done this but they've split this anime like you need to stop doing this netflix are really enjoying splitting series i don't know what the oh, hell they're doing gosh, but they that. gave us five episodes of this new anime uh which is one fight so we've waited like a whole bunch of months to watch one fight and the one fight is interesting because it's 
it's always God's the, the whole idea of record versus Ragnar Ragnarok is God's versus man. It's like Mortal Kombat. Whoever wins gets to keep the planet, sort of thing. Um, so if humans don't win, they're they're all gonna die. Um, so the gods are trying to win, and somehow by the scraper of our teeth, because we have a mastermind that is working for us, she's like a if you think of like a chess master, she can think like thirty moves ahead. Oh, uh -huh. We've managed to win two, and the gods have won three matches. And this time round, Buddha is fighting for the humans. Um, With literally Buddha, literally Buddha, but okay. like not like you Buddha you've ever seen before. It, it, the character is fantastic. If you type oh, nice. record of Ragnarok and you see Buddha, he's got like a a lollipop, very cool trendy hair, abs on his abs, and is very <laughs> chilled. But like they do with each character, they they give an episode of backstory. Uh -huh. which is great because I want to know why I care. And the same goes for the, the enemy, that the, the god that they're fighting. I do like the fact that this is classic Dragon Ball Z where they have one move, but that's not even their ultimate move. And uh, then they... I think the animation is fine. It's just the fighting doesn't look good. And because we've only had five episodes, by the time we start remembering why we liked some of the characters, it stops. We don't mm. get really any background into some of the side characters or stuff that's happening around. Um, if I wanted to watch a good fighting anime, I'd probably watch Bakihana. That's also on Netflix. Great fighting boxing. Or oh, Kengan Ishura, another great fighting anime, also on Netflix. Um, so if you had that subscription, you can go and check them out. But I don't know how much longer they're going to be able to keep making this anime if they don't up their game or at least give us a proper series like Netflix used to do. Yeah. drop it or give us the weekly episode in time with what comes out in um japan so that was a little bit frustrating mm. uh, nice to see the, the the episodes back but still just like ugh, what is this <laughs> um okay so here's one that my son has been and this is on High Dive as well, that my son has been telling me to watch for ages. Uh, and it's just one of those I just haven't gotten around to. I think he's read all the manga for it. And I started watching it this week and my eldest son came to me and said, wait, you started watching what? He said, uh, how many sad anime series have you watched before? And I, I rattled off some, f and I said, oh, this one it's like broke me and was really sad. And, mm -hmm. and this one, I will always remember this character. And he just shook his head. He said, you've got to prepare yourself. He said, this one is going to wreck you. <laughs> it's called Made in Abyss. Uh, a girl and her robot companion search for her mother who's lost within a vast chasm. If you think of a city or a big, big village built on top of a mountain, or what could be a volcano, but in the volcano, there's no, there's no volcano. It's just a massive hole and they don't know how deep it goes. It seemingly goes on forever. This, this huge, huge hole. Um, but as the as you go into the hole, there are creatures that are not from, shouldn't exist. Different mm. creatures and they keep coming out. But um, or, like through the generations, they get divers that go a certain amounts of length. You can go like 90 meters or 100 meters and you're young, get trained up to go go diving what they mean by diving is just like literally going into a hole and looking scavenging for things and then those that are more experienced will go deeper and heavier so sure we get into we get introduced to this world through the two young a, a girl and a boy who find a robot uh who has technology that no one's ever seen um the, but the robot doesn't know what it is either and seems sort of sentient like the robot has a belly button and man parts so that suggests that maybe it's a hybrid of some kind but the mm. technology it has has no memory it's beautiful to watch it reminds me of like studio ghibli sort of animation it, it's really stunning to look at i've only seen the first episodes of this but i'm wary because <laughs> of what my son has told me i know it has a huge following uh, and it's very loved and it must there must be a reason that people love it so much i think there are multiple different types of so like you have one or two seasons but it also has like side shoots of different stories within the world hmm. there's uh at least according to imdb season one is on prime in the u.s okay cool and so nice. it's 13 episodes are they all the the standard like 22 minute type things yeah okay 
Yeah, I was, I was watching the as you were talking. Um, just the trailer was playing silently on IMDb, and the animation is beautiful. Oh. I mean, it is. It really is stunning, and the the creatures, some of the designs of those, I nice. Very cool. Yeah. Um, did you hear about the nurse who didn't want to become a doctor? No. She didn't have any patients. <laughs> 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 all right that is all the anime news i have okay this week thank you paul for suggesting uh one to have a look at i will continue to find new interesting stuff i'm sure chris will watch or hear about something and he can add in his two cents yeah i've got i really have to dive into some studio ghibli mm. um my oldest son this week after right out of he walked out of joyride with us and then um we were walking like starting to walk out and he was like i'll see you guys later and then he's walking into another movie theater and i'm like what what what's going on <laughs> well he was meeting a friend because right. he had bought tickets to um is castle in the sky one yeah. of them is that what yeah, it's yeah. called okay yeah, so i think sky, that's yeah. what he saw this week Amazing. Uh, it was in the it was At playing the in the theater so yeah. cool i would love to watch that the, at the cinema yeah so I've got a yeah. There's a, there's a few that they've really recommended me. They're like, okay, you need to start with these. I'm like, okay, yeah, so. okay. yeah. You need to sort that out, Chris. I know, I know. <laughs> but yeah, that is uh, everything. That oh, that's that's the whole okay, okay. That's, well, that's the whole lot. Short week, at least on content. Long week mm. as far as talking. But hey, there you go. Uh, please remember that we have a Patreon. Uh, you can visit us at patreon.com slash the bearded ones. It's on the screen mm -hmm. and the description below as well. But that will you can visit there. There are a couple that are outside of the paywall. Uh, then there are several tiers that you can jump in on. Uh, the first tier, the entry level one pound, which is like a dollar thirty, I think. Uh, in US dollars uh, per month that gets you access to all the videos there. So that's, you know, outstanding. There's over 60. Uh, we really enjoy doing it. The funds that are raised from that go to help offset the cost of this production because this uh, isn't free for us with the technology <laughs> and everything that we do. Uh, so head over there. Then like, share, subscribe, our individual YouTube channels, wherever you happen to be watching us, or if you're listening on the podcast, you know, head over to YouTube. But Ruben with the Ruby Tuesday, me, Chris, Movies and Munchies. Uh, we have the audio exclusive portion that will be tacked on to this if you're listening on a podcast, or if you want to, first time ever, check out the podcast, any platform that you find us on, I mean, or that you use, we should be on there. So that's... Uh, that's great. You can just search the best thing we watched and we will pop up. If you happen to do that, uh, please rate and review us. We're going to talk about entertainment news and the strike and its effects is probably going to be a large discussion within that. Uh, we will hit some of the things that are coming up in the next week that we are looking forward to. And we're going to talk about the either the worst thing or the thing that just did not make it on our list this week. And we both watched a movie again it had been mm. forever. Like, I don't even remember how long it had been. Um, and so we're going to talk about that. It's Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. So if you want to hear a discussion about that, head over to the podcast. With that, though, we will see you next week. All right. Take care. <laughs>